In episode 26, I unboxed this epic IBM ThinkPad T60 and did a crapload of upgrades. I replaced the 32-bit CPU with the fastest 64-bit CPU this IBM can take. I then maxed out the RAM and upgraded the mechanical hard drive to an SSD and topped it off by replacing Windows XP with Windows 10. I then installed Microsoft Office, Photoshop and Lightroom and used this 13-year-old ThinkPad as my daily laptop for a full month. And to my amazement, it did all of my tasks really well. The test is now finished and I have brought out all my modern laptops again and put them to work once again. However, the keyboard is so bloody good on this vintage laptop. I have actually kept it as my main laptop for research and typing. The cheap keyboard on my modern MacBook Pro and HP feels so crappy, I might never go back again. But nothing is perfect, unfortunately, and I have a couple of issues with this machine to take care of. Firstly, I blew one of the bloody USB ports by connecting a charger that drew way too much current. This was a bit of a surprise to me. I thought the USB standard had some kind of specified current limit for peripherals. Secondly, every now and then the Wi-Fi does not reconnect when the IBM wakes back up from sleep mode. Then there is a very annoying limitation when I do my research online. Lots of pages today are made for screens that are wider than the 1024 panel in this T60, so I have to scroll sideways. And finally, sometimes the panel goes a bit dim. It's not much, and I can keep on working. And the problem goes away if I boot. But it's very annoying, to say the least. So, let's take care of all this crap and make some additional upgrades while we're on it. Since I have to replace the motherboard to fix the USB, I have got myself a board with a better GPU. The original board has an Intel 945 Express, and my new board here has the ATI Fire GL V5200. To get rid of the scrolling, I have to replace the whole bloody panel, so I've got myself this nice 1400 panel made by Samsung. And lastly, I will also add some Bluetooth, just for the hell of it. So, let's get started. Alright, so let's get that battery out. And then that hard drive. Or SSD, I should say. Yeah, these are quite easy to upgrade. So there's only five screws and they are clearly marked to remove the palm rest and then there's one screw for the keyboard and that's enough to get inside the machine actually it does get a bit more complicated later on so palm rests comes off like this and then the keyboard only has one connector here and then we have the memory modules here and unfortunately the T60 is maxed out at 3 gigs of RAM and then we have the keyboard bezel that sits here with two screws on top and a bunch of screws underneath the machine and here is where things get a bit complicated because these screws here are different sizes and different length. So I suggest if you take apart the T60 that you take a picture or make some kind of note to which screw goes where. So I'm gonna fast forward here but as you can see there is a crap load of screws that needs to be removed. So now the keyboard bezel should come off and sometimes it comes off very easily but a couple of times I've been struggling to get this bezel off for quite a bit and there it is next up we have the seed rum and it's really easy to just pull out like this 
And then we're ready to remove the panel. So it has this connector that should just pop off by gently prying it. Like so. And then we only have two screws remaining. And yeah, then we have to pop off these two. So if you're replacing a motherboard for the first time, take lots of pictures. It does help. Yeah, there's nothing really complicated here. Uh, the hard part is to remember where all the screws go. Because there are so many different sizes. So here we have the Wi-Fi. And then we have the heatsink. And this heatsink is cooling the CPU and the GPU. And it's not identical to the fan from the other board. Then we have the coin cell for the BIOS. And now we can remove the fan assembly. And next up I'll disconnect the power connector. And the connector for the battery pack. And the speakers down here. And then I think it's only three screws left. This one is easily forgotten. And then we have the last two screws here. And I think it comes off. So, have I forgotten something? Yeah, I think these have to be removed as well. I'm not sure, but it doesn't really matter. They are going to be removed at a later stage anyways. So I might as well get them out now. Yeah, this assembly is quite complicated compared to vintage compacts I've been working on. So, it's a three-part assembly. And if you watched episode 26, you know this machine is filled with coffee. Because when I got this machine, the first thing I did was to spill a full cup of coffee <laughs> right into the keyboard. Bit of a silly thing to do, and it's not a big issue because it has drain holes, so uh, the electronics are fine. So, and the final step is to remove the motherboard by removing a bunch of screws, and there's nothing complicated here either. But here again, we have lots of different sizes, so pay attention or take lots of notes. Or pictures. So we're just about done here I think. This might be the last one. Ah uh, yeah. The VGA connector here has two nuts. That needs to be loosened. Yeah, here it is. So I will move the upgraded CPU to the other board. And here you can see my coffee. And then we have the panel. And the panel is put together with screws that are hidden behind these stickers. And there are quite a lot of them. So we have two squares at the top. And then we have these round ones, three of them at the bottom, and they are easily removed with a knife. And then we have two hidden screws here, behind these square stickers. And finally we have one on this side. 
And all we have to do now is to remove these screws. And we should be able to replace the panel. And if I'm not mistaken, it should now just pop off. Yeah, there seems to be some double-sided sticky tape here as well. Yeah, here's our bezel. And then we have a couple of screws here. There's only one screw holding this PCB down. So there are two screws on each side that holds the panel. And this machine is really well built, so I have never seen such sturdy hinges before. And I think this is the last screw. Yeah, that was a bit messy. But here's our panel. And the 1024 panel is a Samsung as well. All right, we are ready for reassembly. So a quick tip if you're working on laptops, cover the lid with something because I have scratched so many lids over the years. It's so easy to get one of the screws underneath the lid when you're working on it and you will make some nasty scratches. Um, this particular machine is in mint condition, so um, we wouldn't want any scratches on this one. Anyways, uh, first off we have the Bluetooth and it's this little thingy here. However, it comes with a connector on this ribbon cable, so if you want to upgrade your T60 with Bluetooth, you have to replace the entire ribbon. Which is a bit of a stupid thing. The original T60 ribbon is missing that white connector you can see down there. Alright, let's get it in place. So up here we have the LED that lights up the keyboard. Which is a bit of a weird IBM ThinkPad thing. I haven't seen any other brands of laptops using this type of LED. I kind of like it. Uh, okay, and then we have the Bluetooth down here. And it just sits here with one screw. Okay, so I will get the hinges on the panel first and then put the whole assembly down on the lid. Because I think that's a bit easier. Yeah, here's the old panel. As you can see, the ribbon cable is there, but there is no connector. So, bit of a stupid thing to do. Why have two different parts? It's just silly. Alright, that was not an easy task. Because the wiring is so tight around this panel. It took me a good 15 minutes to get it reassembled. But I eventually got it there. But, before we move on, now that we have replaced the panel and the motherboard, this T60 is not a T60 anymore. With this new specs, it's actually a T60P. So, I have got myself a T60P bezel. So, I'm gonna use this instead. And it looks to be in good condition. So, I think it will match this minty machine well. So, I guess I'll check all the wiring quickly. Okay, so I took the opportunity to clean the boards with some isoprop. And uh, let's swap the CPUs because my old board had been upgraded to the T7600, which is the fastest CPU that the T60 can take. And my new board has a... what is it? T7200, so it's a bit slower. So, I guess I'll get that board back into the machine. And while cleaning the machine, I realized I can make yet another upgrade. Because what I thought was a dual PC card slot is actually one PC card slot and one Express card slot. So, we can add USB 3 to this machine. Which the T60 or T60P doesn't have, obviously. 
So, the card just goes in here, like so. And there we have it. Awesome. So I skipped ahead a bit, not to bore you, because the reassembly is basically the reversal of the disassembly. But I stopped here and started the camera to show you something. Because if you upgrade the motherboard with a different GPU, you need to make sure you get the correct fan assembly for it. As you can see, these are quite different. And my new fan assembly is cooling this ATI chip, which, well, of course, isn't present on my old board. So, if you upgrade your motherboard with another graphics chip, make sure you get the correct fan assembly for it. And before we replace that fan assembly, let's add some thermal paste. And don't forget the connector. Or you will overheat, of course. Perfect. Time to get the panel back. Uh, and I have to say, it's much easier to, to remove the entire assembly. And then get the full assembly back on. And messing around with these screws with the screen still sitting in the machine. Yeah, almost done for a test. All right, so I have enough stuff here on to make a quick test. Let's see if it runs. Okay, so we have something on the display. That's a good start. And I have removed the BIOS battery, so it should complain about the time and date. Yeah, here we go. So, um, so we've got the T7600, 3 gigs of RAM, and now the fan started. I need to check if that's the last version of the BIOS. Okay, anyways, time and date. Yeah, it's getting late. So, this m motherboard doesn't match the installation of Windows on this hard drive, so... Um, Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's at least trying to start Windows. If it's only the graphics chip, it might actually work with the old installation. That would be nice, if I don't have to reinstall Windows. Yeah, that looks good. And that fingerprint reader is actually quite good. Yeah, awesome. It seemed to be working just fine, and the resolution now, of course, is 1400 instead of 1024. Let's check those display settings. And yeah, here we have it. 1400 by 1050. Perfect. Yeah, let's check those drivers. Okay, so we've got an unknown device here. So I need to fix this, but first I'll guess I'll reassemble the machine and clean it up a bit. The workbench is still full of screws. Alright, I'm all finished with the reassembly and I guess my Mint T60 is now a Mint T60P. And I ended up doing a bunch of things off camera. After cleaning up the ThinkPad, I noticed a bunch of nasty scratches on the display bezel. So I replaced the bezel with my old Minty one. And I then gently heated the T60P label with a heat gun, and it came off very easily. So I could replace just the label instead of the whole bezel. I then tried to install the last driver for the Bluetooth module from Lenovo. But unfortunately, it does not work under Windows 10. It's a bummer, but not a big issue, since I'm probably never going to use it anyway. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi still misbehaves, so I tried to reinstall Windows, but to no avail. This is a bigger concern, since I use the Wi-Fi daily. I guess I will have to use a PC card to solve this. But if you know of a solution to this problem, please let us know in the comments. It would be much nicer to use the original Wi-Fi. However, the panel replacement was successful. And now I don't need to scroll sideways anymore. And that concludes this video.